the removal of cataracts from the eyes is comparable with the removal of a particular form of forgetfulness. Your eyes begin to remember first times. And it is in this sense that what they experience after the intervention is a kind of visual renaissance. The unstartling heterogeneousness of the existent has marvelously returned. And the two eyes, port calluses, now removed, again and again register surprise. wie Geschichten zu Bildern werden und Gemälde sich in Erzählungen verwandeln. Kaum jemand kann einem das so nahe bringen wie der große Erzähler John Berger. Als Schriftsteller, politischer Essayist und Kunstkritiker ist er eine der eindringlichsten Stimmen in Europa. Burgers Lebensthema ist das Sehen. Selbst die Erfahrung einer grauen Staroperation verwandelt er in eine Reflexion über unsere Wahrnehmung. Tomorrow it will be three weeks after the operation. And if I try to sum up the transformed experience of looking, I'd say it's like suddenly finding oneself in a scene painted by Vermeer. The surface of everything you are looking at is covered with a dew of light. John Berger verleiht seine Augen, sagen seine Freunde. Durch seine Linse sehen wir die Welt schärfer. Über die Jahrzehnte hat das zu den ungewöhnlichsten Dialogen mit anderen Künstlern geführt, mit denen er gemeinsam nachdenkt, schreibt, veröffentlicht. Das Geschenk der neuen Augen nach der Operation teilt Berger mit seinem Freund, dem türkischen Zeichner Selçuk Demirel. Daraus entsteht ihr gemeinsames Buch, Katarakt. Vom Wunder des Sehens. Ah. 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 Such a... Yeah, um, endless storytelling imagination. Avec John, des amitiés de presque 30 ans. On a réalisé deux, trois livres ensemble. Mais c'était pas une commande. C'était pur plaisir. C'était comme un jeu. Il m'a expliqué que voilà, si tu veux, il m'a dit, je peux, je peux organiser un, un rendez-vous, tu peux participer à l'opération, ça peut être une expérience pour toi, comment ça se fait l'opération de l'œil. Puis on est allé euh, à l'hôpital, 15-20, il avait son médecin, il me présentait, et puis voilà, il a dit, lui aussi, il est obsédé de l'œil, il dessine tout le temps les œils, tout ça. Puis euh, nous, tous les deux, obsédés de le voir, il est, comment dire, des regards et de l'œil. C'était ça peut-être l'essentiel du bouquin, c'est les mémoires de l'œil, mémoire du regard. Avec John, je me trouve très drôle. Parce que John, il rend euh, ses entourages. Euh, par exemple, moi, je, personnellement, je me sens plus intelligent, plus drôle, plus généreux. Quand je suis avec lui. <laughs> I had a dream 
in which I was a strange dealer, a dealer in looks or appearances. I collected and distributed them. And in the dream, I had just discovered a secret. I discovered it on my own, no help. The secret was to get inside whatever I was looking at. Get inside it. When I woke up from that dream, I couldn't remember how it was done. And I now no longer know how to get inside things. I started writing art criticism. How old was I? I was uh, 25, 26. Um, and a great deal of my life up to that moment had been involved with drawing and with painting. Kokoschka, as both a man and a painter, has fascinated me for a long time. Somehow, when you consider Picasso, it is the spirit of the man rather than any single work which dominates and is so striking. The act of looking for Giacometti is a form of prayer, a way of grasping or glimpsing the absolute. Painting, drawing, was something that I thought I knew something about. And therefore, the only experience I had really was about looking, looking and, and, and doing something on paper or in three dimensions with what one saw, the interrogation of appearances. Does it feel cops? Cops is under the German German Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech Republic. Yeah, we made a video in the Czech um, and that and that is that's at Rochepalli. I think. I think. I so. think it's at Rochepalli. No, I think so too. But we look good, don't we? Very good. Both of us. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Since you were a small kid, we used to look at pictures, reproductions together, in books, on postcards, and then we would chat about them. Exactly. Um, so here, this is about a little collection of pictures that could come from our life. It's gone chatting. Exactly. Good. You start. Do you feel like that sometimes in the morning? <laughs> um... Not really, not really, but I, but, um, I would love to be able to plunge my hand in such luxurious hair. Uh. I, I wish I could, but no, I don't. But do you think that this could be the head that fits behind this? <laughs> Well, I mean, they're, they're both paintings by Corbet. Mm -hmm. uh, and the funny thing is that looking at this one, which is called The Origin of the World, you don't think about the woman's face. You don't think about the rest of her. At the same time, it's not... It's not sexually provocative. Uh, you're just in face of, of astounding, always surprising reality. In that sense, is it like um, 
euh, nature morte. Like a, 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 a nature morte. No. <laughs> It's the opposite of a nature morte. I, I mean, we could call it the nature vivant. <laughs> uh -huh. This is the first of four programs in which I want to question some of the assumptions usually made about the tradition of European painting. Filming this was a moment of great tension for me because if John was going to screw it up, there was no way we could repeat it. Well, this is where a lot of my old films and all the stuff has, including some, including, I think, the original film cans containing the cutting copy of Ways of Seeing. Auch der britische Regisseur Mike Dipp hat sich mit John Berger auf eine Exkursion über unsere Sehgewohnheiten begeben. There it is, Ways of Seeing. So, programs one and two. And the old film. Ihre legendäre BBC-Serie Ways of Seeing öffnete 1972 einer ganzen Generation die Augen für eine neue Politik des Sehens. I think the first idea he had was to use an archetypal European painting as a point of departure and deconstruct the concept of national heritage. What did national heritage mean when we talked about national heritage, when we really were talking about the private wealth of enormous landowners? The process of seeing paintings or seeing anything else is less spontaneous and natural than we tend to believe. A large part of seeing depends upon habit and convention. All the paintings of the tradition used the convention of perspective, which is unique to European art. I remember saying, well, John, shouldn't we just say, well, maybe, or perhaps, or something? He said, no, 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 you just got to say it. If you say it and somebody disagrees, then they're engaged. Now, perspective centers everything on the eye of the beholder. It is like a, a beam from a lighthouse, only instead of light traveling outwards, Appearances travel in, and our tradition of art called those appearances reality. We tried a lot of experiments, and funny enough, most of them didn't work terribly well, but one worked amazingly when we had the uh, Caravaggio. I think it's a man. I think it's a woman. It's a woman. There's no bristles even. Woman. Yes, but he hasn't got any bristles. He got a moustache. Yes, yeah. he hasn't got any bristles. Um, but all of the, all of the, no, not quite all, but most of the boys thought that he was a man, and most of the girls, you thought he, she, she was a woman. I'm not sure. What and you said she was, she was perhaps both. Because they were really looking and really relating what they saw to their own experience, they recognised something that most adults wouldn't. Without knowing the artist's name, let alone anything about Caravaggio's life or the fact that he was a homosexual, they immediately saw how sexually ambivalent the principal figure was. Caravaggio is, is, is I think, he's my favourite painter. I mean, the paintings by other painters, which perhaps I prefer, but as a, as a figure, as, as a, a life, uh, he, he is my... His life is my favorite life of a painter. Um, and why? Because he was consistently a rebel. You cannot predict the impact a series has. And not, I don't think it occurred to John and myself the effect the series was going to have. Because it didn't certainly occur to the BBC that it might have any impact. To actually suggest at the end of a television film, be critical of what we're telling you, that was also uh, just something which was just so different. But remember that I am controlling and using for my own purposes the means of reproduction needed for these programmes. The images may be like words, but there is no dialogue yet. You cannot reply to me. I hope you will consider what I arrange but be skeptical of it. From a very, very early age, really when I was a small kid at my first school, um, 
I was uh, skeptical about the world and what was happening around me. Uh, and so I became a conspirator against it. And then, now, I think as soon as I'm really in contact with somebody, whether I know them very well and love them or whether it's a stranger, if there is that common feeling, I treat them as a fellow conspirator. As a, an, an accomplice, complicity. An, 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 <laughs> an accomplice, and, and, it, and with, a, with a wink. I propose a conspiracy of orphans. We exchange winks. We reject hierarchies, all hierarchies. We take the shit of the world for granted. And we exchange stories about we ways in which we nevertheless get by. We are impertinent. Yes. We are impertinent. And I guess that I approach and chat up viewers and readers in the same way. As if you too were orphans. Get what I mean? I said to him, you know, I knocked the ball to him, and I said, well, how can we, how can we start? How should we start? And then he said to me, you know, the bang, with the ball came back, and he said, uh, will you, uh, why didn't you just send me a colour? I said, OK, great. And it was... But then, of course, I put the phone down and thought, well, what's he talking about? Um, how am I going to do that? send him a colour. I mean, would I send him some powder, I don't know, some coloured powder? How, what would I do? Auch der Maler, Verleger und Kameramann John Christie ist einer von Burgers langjährigen Komplizen. Gemeinsam haben sie unter anderem über Farben nachgedacht und daraus ein Buch gemacht. I send you this cadmium red. So, here we have the very first letter I sent. Yesterday I went to a funeral, someone I didn't really know very well. And during the service, before the cremation, I was looking at the flowers. Uh, but when I got home, I was still thinking about these flowers and I thought I posed myself a, a problem uh, to try and find the red colour, which I liked very much. Um, I tried to identify it and I went to my watercolour box. And so for no better reason than the memory of those flowers, I send you this cadmium red. And then very soon I got a letter back from him. Red is not usually an innocent colour. But the red you sent me is. <laughs> yeah, it's the red of childhood. A pretend red. Or, if you like, the red of young eyelids shut tight. It's like the colour when you're a kid, when you shut your eyes and look up at the sky. And it's that colour, that red colour with the blood in your eyelids. Um, and I thought, gosh, that's amazing. And then, of course, we went on from that, where we making and making these different letters and replies. We didn't start off with a proper list. Or, I mean, a list of colours. These are the ones we're going to do. They're very much colours that presented themselves to us. It was John's question to do with uh, Genevieve being pregnant. What colour would you see inside her? And so the colour I worked out or thought about was Mother of Pearl. Um, and so, look, there's, there's the photo. Genevieve's... Where is she? In that, hold on. Genevieve's there, this one little figure in the blue dress. And John described this 
the bay, all the things leading to this figure. The world is spread out for her. The waters break. The bay opens. The sand is skin colored. The houses wait, watching. I'd name that bay Uterus Bay. So conscious does it make us aware of everything that is within, inside, moving, moving, inside that tiny figure of Genevieve. So they were all things that came from really thinking about... Um, just thinking about this shell. I mean, I hadn't even looked at for... but Because I was writing about it to John, trying to make something interesting. And then you discover things that you hadn't... I, I discovered things I hadn't seen at all. Now, don't you think it's John's son? Maybe. <laughs> Johnny. Um, no, it's you! It's not. <laughs> it's you! <laughs> No, 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 it's not me. No, 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 really, really, you're completely wrong. Look again. It's really not me. Serious. Das Interesse an der politischen Dimension unseres Blicks führte Börgerl in den 60er Jahren zu einer langjährigen Zusammenarbeit mit dem Schweizer Fotografen Jean Moore. In verschiedenen Dokumentationen porträtierten sie unter anderem Arbeitsmigranten in Europa und experimentierten dabei mit einer ganz neuen Form der Bildtexterzählung. Of all the things we've done together, books anyway, uh, I think I'm proudest of the seventh man. On one hand, it's a book that we were incredibly precise about, laying out every page, considering every space, every juxtaposition of image, mm -hmm. seeing exactly <coughs> where a poem should occur, And so we actually made something with this maximum concentration, which was, in a certain sense, can be called aesthetic. And, at the same time, the book, when once it's out, actually goes and to its target. That is to say, uh, not really principally to sociologists, uh, but to migrant workers themselves. Sa première réaction a été de dire « C'est terrible, au moins une moitié de ce que j'ai écrit, je peux le mettre au panier, ou le mettre de côté en tout cas, parce que toi, avec une image, tu dis davantage que moi avec plusieurs pages de texte. » J'étais très fier de moi, et ensuite il a rajouté « Mais, toi aussi, les photos que tu me montres là, il y en a un bon tiers que tu peux oublier pour notre livre en commun. Ce sont des photos trop esthétiques et trop indirectes. Alors, ça m'a fait beaucoup de mal sur le moment, mais j'ai dû admettre que il avait raison. Il se méfiait des trop belles photos. Il aimait bien ce qui approchait de, de l'accident. What I appreciate in him is that he goes up and down. I, I would be tempted to say like a woman sometimes, but it's wrong because it doesn't belong only to women to, to be so expressive, so, so warm. Uh, but he's just outspoken. Je pense qu'au fond, il aurait aimé être un tout petit peu acteur. Donc, son côté showman ressort à tout moment. There are pictures of John as a young man, like that one, where he's very strong and certain of himself and, well, very positive. But it's more or less the public face he wants to give away. 
while in the last 10 years I begin to catch on his face all kinds of other feelings, certain anxiety, also doubts about some of his beliefs. Okay, so here is somebody else traveling, and I know that this painting counted a lot for you in your whole, in your whole life. And yes. Are we approaching motorbikes here? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Here we are approaching motorbikes. Oh, incredibly. Uh, and of course, it's by Rembrandt, and it is called the Polish Rider. Who he was, and where he was, and I don't think Rembrandt called it Polish Rider, but uh, if I was a manufacturer of motorbikes, I would, I would call one the Polish Rider. Yeah, oh, use that bang. for publicity. <laughs> If you're going to survive riding a bike, you have to be totally concentrated on the here and now. About everything observed of the here and now. You don't think about the past, you don't think about the future, you don't have memories, you don't have expectations, except the immediate ones which are to be negotiated. And this concentration on the here and now is curiously calming. Uh, because, well, they are, you are ex alive, you're moving, uh, and uh, you notice what you're moving through, and that's all that exists. Il avait un Anglais là qui est venu longtemps avec lui. Un homme très gentil, serviable. Ah oui, oui, oui on travaillait souvent ensemble. Il savait bien se débrouiller déjà. Comme il fallait travailler, quoi. Au sujet de faire les foins. Oui. I was looking at that time for a piece that I was going to make. And a friend of mine said, oh, but you're, remember what John wrote in Pig Earth. Remember, do you remember the three lives of Lucy Cabral? And I wrote to John and said, you know, would you consider letting me make this for the stage? And John being John said, well, of course. But the only payment I would require is if I could come and watch you work at some point. So then I went up to visit him for the first time in the mountains with my designer. And we walked with John through the mountains. And he'd showed us the very places which had been inspirational to him in making Lucy Cabral. 
and that really started what became a very deep friendship. And so as a consequence, we've done many, many, created many pieces together. You know, the story of Lucy Cabral, there was really a, a woman. And most of the characters in the story are, are people I, I came to know quite closely. And now to see those lives transported here and actually speaking to thousands of people who are so, so far away from the life of peasants in mountain villages is uh, still something which is very, very mysterious to me. Die szenische Adaption von Burgers Erzählung Die drei Leben der Lucie Cabrol wird zu einem internationalen Erfolg für die britische Theaterkompanie The Complicité. Lucie Cabrol, who was known as the Cockadry, is dead. In the writing of Into Their Labors, he holds sort of the generations of all these people who don't, who are nameless and who have had no voice, who don't exist really for us. They've disappeared. And he brings them to life. It's a girl! Generations of labor, a particularly precarious form of very, very brutal agriculture. I might say, well, what if we do this? And we change it and develop it. And, or I might add something, or I'd found something, or we missed something, and I would invent something else. Whatever I suggested, he would not only consider it or be open to it, he would be immediately interested. My father, mother, brothers, sisters, cows, horses, rabbits, chickens, goats, all have gone... And Lucy Cabron is dead. Is dead. I say that. But I do not altogether believe it. And I don't altogether believe it. Sometimes it seems to me that I am nearing the edge of the forest. I will never again be 16. And if I am to leave the forest, it will be on the far side. It will be on the far side. Do I feel this because I'm old and tired? I doubt it. But there are moments when I see something different. Moments when a blue sky reminds me of Lucy Cabral. I can smell the lilac through the shit. It smells of mint. Mixed with a lot of honey. And this perfume takes me back to my very early childhood. To the first garden I ever knew. From long before either lilac or shit had a name. Tu nous manques, John. Quand c'est que tu viens faire un tour à Bonjour, de la part de Louis. There, this is a present for you. I will show it. Oh. Burgers Texte sind in der ganzen Welt in alle Sprachen übersetzt. Wow. Sein deutscher Übersetzer, Hans-Jürgen Balmes, ist über die Jahre zu einem engen Freund geworden. Gosh. This is Die Entstehung vieler Burger-Texte hat Balmes von Anfang an miterlebt. In der Küche in Cancy oder wie heute in Burgers Studio in Paris. I think he's going upstream a river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Das Spannende an unserer Zusammenarbeit ist, dass John oft ahnt, dass er an was Neuem sitzt aber er noch nicht so richtig weiß, wo es hingeht. 
Und da für ihn ja quasi der kommunikative Akt äh, so wichtig ist, äh, hat er dann immer äh, darauf geschaut, dass man vorbeikommt, äh, hat einen eingeladen oder hat darauf gelauert, dass man zufällig über Genf kam. Und dann war es oft so, dass wir den ganzen Tag äh, so ums Haus rumgewandert sind. Und dann am Abend in der Küche äh, zieht er dann plötzlich ein paar Seiten hervor und sagt, ähm, übrigens, äh, ich möchte euch was vorlesen. Okay. It was hot, perhaps 28 degrees centigrade, and at the end, it was the end of the month of May. An old woman with an umbrella was sitting very still on one of the park benches. She had the kind of stillness that draws attention to itself. To whom was it addressed? Abruptly, abruptly, as I was asking myself this question, She got to her feet, turned, and using her umbrella like a walking stick, came towards me. And I recognized her walk, long before I could see her face. The walk of somebody already looking forward to arriving and sitting down. It was my mother. All my books have been about you, I suddenly say. Books are also about language, and language for me is inseparable from your voice, mother. Nonsense. Maybe you wrote them so I should be there, keeping you company, and I was. Yet they were about everything in the world but me. I've had to wait until now, until you're an old man in Lisboa, for you to be writing this very short story about me. Ich übersetze Johns Bücher, ist ja schon seit, seit über 20 Jahren. Es entsteht dann so eine Vertrautheit äh, mit der Sprache, die ja sehr vielfältig ist. Sehr, genauso wie die Genre, er schreibt Erzählungen, Gedichte, Essays. Und äh, je länger man an seinen Sachen arbeitet, desto schwerer fällt es einem zu unterscheiden, bei welchem Text man gerade ist, weil die Essays sind poetisch dicht. In den Erzählungen äh, kommen essayistische Einschübe vor. Äh, in den Essays wird unheimlich viel erzählt und in den Gedichten werden manchmal ähm, kleine Einsichten formuliert, die in einem Essay einfach nur noch so aus der Tasche gefallen sind. Und dadurch äh, ist man, wenn man John übersetzt, eigentlich die ganze Zeit dabei, äh, auf dem großen Klavier zu spielen und alle Töne dabei zu haben und das macht das Übersetzen von John eigentlich so, so vielfältig. In Economy of Death you said that the living are at the core of the dead. They surround us and they depend on us. Like the passage that you read where you meet your mother in Lisbon. And mm. No, I mean, I follow what you mean, and maybe I suggest that, but it's not really quite what I mean. It's rather more the other way around. Uh, uh, I mean, it is that uh, we uh, need the dead um, to... to uh, to recognize ourselves in any way Uh, the dead are essential to us. Uh, um, and that recognition begins with their company in mortality. Hmm. Not immortality, mortality. Oh, it's a very curious painting. Isn't it? Very, very curious. Do you have anything to tell me about this man? I think the window is his life. And uh, he's trapped in it, maybe wondering what's outside. 
and when he shuts his eyes the window will vanish. What does he tell you about himself? What does he tell me? Yeah. For some reason, he tells me that, and I'll tell you why. Because he actually looks like you and always made me think of you. And there's something there, too. Well, I mean, that's too flattering. But his, his scepticism, mm -hmm. but which is not, never cynical, um, is uh, very close to me. And, you know... This is not to claim anything for myself, but I mean, that is really the image of the storyteller. Mm -hmm. huh? Not the novelist, uh, uh, not the fashionable literary creator, but the guy, often nomadic, who goes from place to place and tells the stories that he has lived or that he's making up. And that, that idea of a traveller, uh, that idea of uh, somebody who is completely free from institutions is something also which is contained for me in this term, storyteller, um, and which in all modesty um, I try to be myself. But he kept on drawing. It's a way of listening. It's a way of understanding, discovering the visible. And I think that's why in the last years my, my father has uh, done a lot of drawings of very simple things like such as flowers or ma mainly... Um, mainly subjects coming from nature. Dearest Eve, in answer to your last letter, I send two postcards. One is a photo of a terracotta by Della Robbia. And the second is a sketch by me, what I call a text of a white rose from the garden. I noticed that it had a certain curious echo with the photo of the Madonna. Something a little similar in mood and rhythm. No, you see? Neighbours on the same table. That's all. And the rose doesn't offer consolation but resists, resists by itself the quality of life. During the last week, I've been drawing mostly flowers. I've been asking myself whether natural forms, a tree, a cloud, a river, a stone, a flower, can be looked at and perceived as messages. Messages, it goes without saying, which can never be verbalized and are not particularly addressed to us. 
Is it possible to read natural appearances as texts? Mm. Well, that'll be a bit of fun uh, amongst all the potential. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you have some wine? Yes, we have. Or, or some whiskey. <laughs> so, uh, to, 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 to you. <laughs> well, well, wonderful. <laughs> That's incredible. It is. <laughs>